and another we like to claim as our own. And in his <laughs> decades-long career, Russell Crowe has enjoyed success most actors can only dream of, and there's no stopping him anytime soon. Aussies first fell in love with him as Hando in Romper Stomper. Hi. Nice place you have, But we couldn't keep his immeasurable talent to ourselves. Hollywood came knocking and Russell showed the world just what he was made of in LA Confidential. It looked like justice. That's what the man got. Justice. From there, he went from one critically acclaimed film to another and earned a string of accolades too. Are you not entertained? Russell taking home an Oscar for his role in the smash hit Gladiator. When you grow up in the suburbs of Sydney, a dream like this seems kind of uh, vaguely ludicrous and completely unattainable. And he picked up a Golden Globe and a Screen Actors Guild Award for A Beautiful Mind. Marcy can't be real. She never gets old. In his decades-long career, Russell has proven he is a true king of the cinema, often stepping behind the camera to write, produce and direct. As the camera passes you, you rise. For his latest big screen role, he's reminding us just how scary talented he is. I call it evil. Russell taking the lead in The Pope's Exorcist as Father Gabriel. Imagine what could happen if the devil possessed the soul of the Pope's Exorcist. Who will defend you? I'm beyond Ooh. thrilled to say that Russell joins us live this morning. Everyone put your hands Yay. together. Yay. Yay. Congratulations on the Pope's Exorcist. It is intense. Mm. Certainly not one for the faint of heart. I feel like I nearly had a heart attack sitting there <laughs> watching that movie. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. Grazie mille, grazie mille. Buongiorno, <laughs> buongiorno, Brooke. Come sta? <laughs> Mate, I, as I was watching it, I thought to myself, I actually think I believe in ghosts. I'm watching this... I'm, I'm seeing mm. you do all of these terrifying things with these poor little kids, you know, possessed by the devil. This is all based on a very real person. Mm. How did you find out about the Vatican's chief exorcist? Well, actually, when I first read the script, I thought the job title of chief exorcist for the Vatican was just some sort of snappy thing that a screenwriter had come up with. I had no idea it was a real job. So I started researching it and then... You know, obviously, you know, Gabriele Amort was in that job for 36 years. So, you know, the incredible thing about him is his lifespan. You know, he's born in Modena in Italy. You know, at 17, he believes he has a calling to God. So he goes into Rome, but they told him, go away, you're too young. You know, you don't know anything. So you think about the, the time period, it's 1942. This young man who had a calling to God ends up fighting for you know, the resistance against the fascists. He's got a gun in his hand. He's shooting to kill. He comes out of that war experience, goes through law school, comes out of law school with his degree and then starts working as a journalist. It's this incredible rich life, mm -hmm. you know. And then he goes back to Rome, says, I still have this calling. But that's a decade later. And they mm -hmm. said, well, it's perfect. Now you've had all these life experiences. You've got things to share as a priest, things to, you know, pass on to people. And so he ends up working as, a, you know, a priest in the Paulus, which is about communication for about 30 years. So he produced radio, produced television, wrote hundreds and hundreds of articles. It's not until he's 60 he gets a tap on the shoulder to take over as chief exorcist for the Vatican. You know what's funny about... 36 years, tens of thousands of exorcisms, yeah. but he left behind... 12 books of his oh first-person experiences. Incredible. I was going to say, Russell, that it's funny that it happened that way around because normally you need an exorcism after being a journalist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, you're no stranger to playing real people on screen, but was, was it a bit different this time around? Like, did you feel, I don't know, a sense of responsibility? Because there is a lot of weight to, yeah. to this sort of role. Well, you always feel that responsibility, you know, but sometimes it's more like a visual responsibility on top of trying to capture some sort of essence of the character. You know, the thing with, with, with Gabriele, the more I looked into it, the more I saw that his faith was pure and he approached his job with, with such 
um, you know, an amount of energy. You know, he's dealing with afflicted people all the time. He's trying to reach into them and bring them some kind of solace, bring them some kind of light. He did that job for 36 years. And mm. the core of that for me was this fact that his faith was unshakable. Mm. But on top of that, he had this very wacky sense of humour, and it's been very well documented. You can find all these photographs with him poking his tongue out and doing this sort of thing, and <laughs> you know, and it's not what you expect yeah. from a man with a job of that level of seriousness. But if you think about what he's doing on a daily basis, having some way to bring himself back to balance, you know, is probably extremely important. Charles Russell, it's Sarah here. Now, we know you are a big <laughs> ambassador for Rome, of course, and you do such incredible yeah. work. So many of your roles based in Italy, of well, course. Officially. Y yeah, officially, yeah, last year yeah. They, they gave me the, the way, honorary yeah. title, mm. Ambassador de Roma nel mundo. <laughs> you say it so, so well too. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're just special. sitting here listening to you, Russell. You, you are an incredible storyteller, by the way. Mm. Well, you know, that's my gig. At the end of the day, whether it's you know through a song or or, you know, actually literally a story or, or, or through a character in a movie, that's the gig, mm. you know, telling people stories. Mm. And it's an age-old uh, tradition amongst, you know, our species to uh, tell a tale and, and hear a tale. And, that, you know, there's a fascinating story in this movie that I think, mm. you know, yeah, it's a horror film, so do be aware. You're probably <laughs> going to be scared. That's what it's made <laughs> Absolutely for. Absolutely terrifying. But through the course of the story, there's also this other stuff going on, a little bit of Da Vinci Code, a little touch yeah. of Indiana Jones, you know, and a lot of humour. Mm. Mate, I, I did want to ask, you touched on um, the music there. You're, you're back out gigging again. How does it feel to be back out on stage? Anything you can't do? Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, I've never stopped. I just haven't played in Australia for a long time. Mm. You know, I think 2014 was the last time we, we did some shows here. 2000, uh, January this year, we did a couple at Coffs Harbour with this new band that I've been putting together. And it just felt great, so we're going to do an East Coast run. You know, we're going to start, I believe, in Byron Bay. We do Coffs again, Port Macquarie. We're going to do a weekend in Sydney at the Bridge Hotel. Then we're in the Cherry Bar in Melbourne and the SB in Melbourne. Cherry we go bar. up to the uh, Gold Coast, uh, Miami Marquetta, a couple of nights in Brisbane. We're actually going to do a show at Australia Zoo in the middle of the day. So if you buy a ticket for the zoo that day, you can see crocodiles and then you can see me. <laughs> you can see more crocodiles. But anyway, then after that we'll be uh, at, in Canberra at the beginning of June, and then we're at the Sydney Opera House for a night, and then we finish off at the University of Sydney in the, the uh, Manning Bar. You know so what? it's going to be, it's 18 shows, it's a big run. I'm going to go to that Manning Bar gig. Oh I reckon it's going to be really fun. And Cherry Bar too, I'm there, the SB. Do you play all the best cool. places, Russ? It's amazing. I mean, and this is the thing, you know, you are, I, lo I love watching you, like I said before, because he's such a good storyteller. And we, we were going to have Carl in this segment too, but we didn't really want him to steal the limelight from mm. you because we just wanted to hear more from you. I love you, Russell. <laughs> he does have something he wants so to say. No, no, just a uh, more. Just, uh, hey, Carl, how are you, mate? A more. Hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> they kept me out of it. <laughs> For your benefit, Russell. For your benefit. Love hey, you, mate. Thank hey, you. Carl, Carl, yeah. don't, don't watch the film too late at night, OK? Don't watch the film because I don't want you staying up too late. I get scared and warned. then I text he does, him. And he does yeah. believe in that sort of stuff too, Russell, so it would genuinely terrify him. Go with God, my friend. <laughs> thank hey, you. thank you so much for being with us this morning, Russell. Um, it is an excellent movie and you can catch Russell's new film, pleasure. The Pope's Exorcist, in cinemas this Thursday. Thanks very much, guys. Russell Have a great said, day. Be prepared. Thank you, Russell. It's it's terrifying. Oh, I I was literally screaming. Oh, oh yeah. that stuff is like it's spine tingling. Isn't I love it? Russell yeah. Crowe. Love him. Go straight. Hey there, today fans. Sarah and. <laughs> What's my name again? Oh Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?